This is Pilltop's 18-in-1 universal docking station that uses display link software to enable users with limited ports or display options on a laptop to having up to 3 4K 60Hz external monitor display, essentially allowing users to extend their screen real estate without a need of an additional physical graphics card allowing for enhanced productivity and multitasking. This means that if you own a base model M1 MacBook Air, you can now display up to a total of 4 displays place. One that is your MacBook screen with up to three additional monitor screens for maximum productivity. As we all know, the M1 silicon chip is limited to single stream display as you are sort of restricted with mirrored display when connecting to more than one monitor. So here is where display link comes in clutch. This docking station also features 10 gigabits type A and type C ports, SD and TF card reader, RJ45 ethernet port and a 3.5 millimeter audio and microphone jack. There are some caveats when using this docking station, especially on CPU load and memory pressure, various latency of video playback and gaming, Netflix DRM piracy concerns since they are actually virtual display. That being said, do stick around as we go through everything you need to know before deciding to pick one of these up for yourself. Hi, my name is Ken and today we'll be taking a look at yet another docking station from Pulltop that features display link technology which outputs either HDMI or display port up to a total of 3 monitors. In this video, we will talk about everything there is to know about display link technology, the features Pulltop's docking station has to offer, the things that I like and dislike and my overall thoughts. As usual, disclaimers first, this is not a sponsored video, however, Pulltop did send over this unit for a review but they have no say in anything that we will be sharing in this video and everything I say is of my own opinion. Yeah, with it out of the way, let's dive right in. Starting with the unboxing of this package, we have an image of what the docking station right here with its product code BD215G. Taking a look at the size, 18 in 1 display link, USB C docking station with triple display, 8K 30Hz, PD 30W charging, and 10 gigabits transfer speeds. We have some sample images and the list of featured specs on the other side. Taking a look inside, we have a bunch of things starting from an instruction manual, a USB stick that contains the display link drivers for offline installations a USB-C to Type-A adapter, a braided USB-C to USB-C cable, a 130 watts DC adapter, and finally the dock itself. The design again is pretty identical with all of the other docking stations showcased here on the channel. All the 18 features are located all around the docking station which we'll talk about it in the next section of the video. And that's basically everything that came included in the box. Now a quick look at all the ports that are available on the docking station. Starting from the front portion all the way to the left, we have the power button for turning the dock on and off. Right beside it is a SD and TF card reader with speeds up to 100 megabytes per second. We have two 10 gigabits per second USB type A port and type C ports. The chargers at an output power of 7.5 watts. Another 10 gigabits type C port that outputs at 30 watts charging rate. We have the 3.5 millimeter audio and mic jack and a USB 2.0 type A port for keyboard and mouse or any other peripheral devices. Looking at the back ports, all the way to the left is the DC jack that takes in 140 watts, 24 volts, 5.83 amp DC power adapter that came included. Right beside it is the two holes USB-C port which is that single USB-C cable that connects everything connected to the dock to your laptop's USB-C port. Then we have three sets of HDMI and display ports right here for that triple monitor setup outputting either HDMI or display port signal to your monitor. And the last port here is a 1 gigabit ethernet port for wired LAN connection. And these are all of the ports and specs available on this 18-in-1 display link docking station. Now that the product and features have been showcased, let's Let's talk about this play link, which is the sole reason your base model M1 MacBook Air is able to overcome the limitation of outputting a miserable one extended display. So, what is display link? Well, I first came across this term while searching for a docking station for my M1 MacBook Air. Now, if you didn't know, with multiple displays connected to the M1 MacBook Air, only mirrored images of the first extended monitor shows up on all of the connected monitors. And this is the limitation with the M1 base chip. Now, to give you as a summary, DisplayLink is essentially a piece of special software driver that bridges the connection between USB and standard display outputs like HDMI and DisplayPort. At its core, DisplayLink is a codec technology that compresses and transmits graphics with 
with minimal display over USB connection. While the USB's bandwidth might seem insufficient for multiple high resolution display, Display Link uses your computer's CPU and GPU to compress images in real time, which enables high quality and responsive display outputs. Additionally, since Display Link is primarily software based, it works across many operating systems without requiring extra hardware on the computer side. However, it is only available on Windows, Mac, Android, Chrome OS, Linux, and Ubuntu, depending on their versions. However, it does not work with iOS or iPad OS. Now, with how the Display Link theory out of the way, let's hook this bad boy up and see what drivers we are required to install. Now, I'll briefly walk you through the step from start to finish using the base model M1 Mac. Air. First off, you will need to of course have all of the required cables and monitors set up before introducing the display link docking station. To break it all down, I have three monitors that I'll be showcasing in this video. And so my first monitor is the 4K Innocent 27C1UD, and the second monitor is the LG 29WK600 29-inch ultrawide monitor. And the last monitor, for the purpose of this showcase, is a FieldWorld F6 Plus 4K camera monitor that takes HDMI in. Also, I'll be only using HDMI to HDMI cable as of my setup. If you prefer running mixed HDMI and DisplayPort cables, I'm sure it will work just fine. So we'll start off with inserting all of the necessary cables like the HDMI into the first port, which is labeled DP out mode from the dock to the innocent monitor. The second HDMI from display one to the LG monitor. And lastly, the third HDMI from display two to the 4K monitor like such. The two host ports connects a USB Type-C to Type-C cable from the dock to the USB-C port of the base model M1 MacBook Air. There is one last cable to connect, that is the DC jack that came included. We'll plug this in right here. Now let's turn this on via the on and off switch located at the front. The button should light up white like such and we are good to go. So as you insert the USB-C cable into your laptop, the first thing that you'll notice is a prompt like such asking if you want to connect Fresco Logic USB 3.0 hub requesting permission to use it. Once allowed, you will start to see only one extended monitor showing up on your monitor. And the other monitors will not have any displays. Now, we have yet to install any display link drivers, so let's do that now. With a given USB flash drive, you can start installing the drivers, or you can head up to synaptics.com, which is the company that created this special display link software to download the latest firmware, which is what I did here. After downloading the latest firmware, I then proceeded to install it on my Mac. And with just a couple of clicks, as soon as the drivers are installed, you should get some permission requests for allowing some sort of screen recording as again the displays are virtually generated by the display link software and is not natively on the machine. Next you should get another prompt about screen recording. The display link manager would like to record the computer's screen and audio, open system settings and toggle on display link manager. Input your password and restart the app and click allow. And just like that, we are actually done. If you look at your display settings, you will have additional monitors showing up on your display settings, indicating that the display link drivers have been installed correctly. Taking a look at the display settings of each of the monitors, you can see right here that all three of the names of the monitor are properly recognized and they are able to output their maximum capable display resolution like such. Moving the mouse across the screen also does seem to be slightly laggy, but we will test out some games on the refresh rates to see if it gets any worse. Now I would also want to check the activity monitor tab to inspect my current CPU and memory pressure levels. Remember earlier I mentioned about one of the downsides of using display link drivers, virtually driving display outputs at the cost of your CPU performance. As you can see, both my CPU and RAM is running a little higher than usual with just a desktop with close to no application running on all of the screens. Now as soon as I fill up all of the monitors with some 4K output source, it went up quite a bit. And as you can see, the base model M1 MacBook Air with only 8GB of memory is already maxing out at 7 gigs from just displaying 3 4K video streams from YouTube as you can see right here. Realistically, you won't ever need to be playing all 3 videos at the same time but this was just me pushing more load to the display link drivers. Now, the video playback experience rendered was not too bad. Like if you are watching some vlogs and you notice the audio and mouth movement, I honestly think that it's not too bad no lag or whatsoever. 
Now the next section, I'll be testing out Final Cut Pro and Lightroom video editing with some Chrome tabs, possibly a YouTube video or Spotify running in the background to see the overall user performance. So let's start off with a quick test on the 10 gigabits port using my usual external SSD drive to see the speeds on it when driving 4K videos on all four monitors. And with all of my testing, here are the results. The write speeds hovered at around 700 megabytes per second and a solid 727 megabytes per second on the read speeds which is not too bad. I also tested out Netflix using display drivers and I sort of expected that I won't be able to do that because Netflix has this piracy restriction and if you are actually screen recording, the playback will just be either grayed out or blank and this was the case. Essentially, Netflix issues DRM licenses only when you are logged into authorized devices, ensuring that contents are not shared, copied or watched without permission so it keeps your movies and shows safe from piracy. And expected, you cannot watch Netflix Netflix or DRM protected content with these display link drivers unless if you toggle them off in which your virtual displays will turn off you will not be able to watch Netflix so, so this turned out to be a little disappointing. Now I usually don't game on MacBooks but there is an FPS game called Crunker.io that I used to play ages ago that I could test out the 60 FPS latency for gaming and overall the latency when gaming with this display link is rather okay. However, I did find that sometimes the screen flickers and pauses quite a bit, making it a bit distracting to play. But overall, I have no problems with both monitors pushing out 4K content and I can still game comfortably with it. However, for games that require high refresh rates, I would highly not recommend you to use a display link driver to actually play games on it because you know these display link drivers aren't built to fully replace a graphics card job, so I wouldn't push it that far. That being said, from just regular browsing and scripting and some Lightroom editing. Overall, I haven't noticed anything abnormal or lagging when using a display link with two extended monitors. Sure, the CPU loads occasionally spiked up a little more than usual and the memory pressure is always in the yellow and red zones as the display link drivers are actively generating virtual graphic displays. Especially rendering 4K video playback sure causes slower performance on the MacBook Air. But if you are not looking to really squeeze up every juice of power of the base model M1 MacBook Air, then the display link drivers can be something that you're looking for if you intend to use multiple monitor setup. I personally really like that this display link driver comes equipped with pretty much everything that, that is lacking on the M1 MacBook Air like an SD card slot, type A port and additional 10 gigabits USB-C ports. Not to mention that these ports are also able to output 7.5 watts charging on your desk and even up to 30 watts power delivery charging. Now I can utilize the full potential of the M1 MacBook Air without the restriction of only one extra standard monitor support. In wrapping up this video, higher spec MacBook like the M2 and M3 MacBooks natively support dual monitor display as a starter, so this pull-top docking station really is targeted at lower-end computers that have enough CPU power to drive virtual displays, so regular everyday tasks like spreadsheets, admin work, email, casual web browsing should be more than sufficient to fully utilize the display link features. Now, do keep in mind that the dock also works with Windows machine or laptops that doesn't have multiple monitor support due to port limitation but bear in mind that you would need to at least have a USB-C port that supports alternate board for the display and a Thunderbolt 3 rated USB-C for utilizing the 10 gigabits transfer speeds so just keep that in mind. That being said if you are interested in the display link USB-C docking station it is currently priced at 200 US dollars you can find out more about it on Pulltop's website which I will leave in the link in the description box down below. Once again a huge shout out to Pulltop for sending over this unit for a review. And that's basically it from me. I hope you have found this video insightful. If you have any questions or anything you want me to test out, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible. As always, thank you all so, so much for tuning in. My name is Ken and I'll catch you all in the next one. Stay safe, peace out, and bye-bye.